So today's uh, day 10 of the SWIP trip. I'm kind of hiking up out of uh, Butte Valley right now, uh, heading over to Highway 50. So um, I'm really digging being up in the mountains. This has been my favorite stretch so far. Um, when I say mountains, I mean mountains like that up over here. Way cool. It's the Egan Range. It's a long, long range. I'm going to be back up in them again later today. Um, so I really dig the terrain. It reminds me a lot of the Gila or like New Mexico. It's really good for off trail travel. Um, the trees are spaced out real wide apart and you can basically, you know, cruise, you know, like kind of like this little valley over here, for example. It's easy to cruise off trail and pick a line through there. And you really just don't know what you'll see. I, I saw some really neat stuff yesterday. Um, you know, it's interesting, and I really commend uh, the folks at Nevada Wilderness Project for allowing me to develop my own opinion of this power line project. It's not like they've spoon fed uh, their ideas to me or made me get on board or something like that. You know, I'm basically allowed to make my own uh, uh, conclusions as I see them firsthand. And yesterday was kind of the first part of the SWIP corridor that I can definitely say that I'm bummed that, you know, power line's gonna be going through there. The way the power line, I, I walk the true uh, corridor using the trace and my GPS through there. And I can honestly say that, you know, going through those canyons with roads being built to get up there to put in the power line and the erosion that'll happen invitably afterwards. You know, you can see the soils around here. There isn't a lot of topsoil, so the slightest rain on a two track on a steep, you know, 45 degree incline is gonna cause a lot of erosion. And uh, it was more than apparent to me that the, uh, the wildlife really used that area. It's a kind of a low point in the ridge so I'll bet that a lot of animals cross from the, uh, the um, Steptoe Valley over into Butte Valley via that. I mean, it was snow free. There's, it's the path of least resistance, you know? And uh, so it'll definitely be an impact for them. And I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not an electrical engineer, but I'm not sure why the route was taken that it was other than to maybe climb at a certain angle and descend at a certain angle. But there were other spots, for example, there was an area called Dry Canyon, where in my mind, if the power line ran in step toe to there and then went right up that canyon and over, it would be more of a straight shot from valley to valley versus kind of like slowly ascending this ridge over the course of 10 miles, you know? And it's 10 miles by line of sight, but it's a heck of a lot further when you start considering all the up and down that I went through yesterday in the canyons back there. And the area, I mean, these uh, game paths were so well used, it looked like single track in spots. So, and it gets you to thinking too, you know, this is one of many power projects, energy projects, they're gonna, get it, gonna be crisscrossing the state of Nevada. And, uh, you know, we've got a natural gas pipeline coming in in the northern part of the state. And uh, it'll be going from east to west. And when I had my unplanned visit to Wells, the woman who checked us in to the Motel 6 said that, you know, we, we didn't bring it up. She just volunteered that, you know, later that summer, the entire uh, place was going to be booked with people working on that pipeline. Now, this is a project that Nevada Wilderness has deemed smart from the start. That's the label they've given to this project. And it's kind of interesting to think that if this is one of the projects, the SWIP, the Southwest Intertie project that I'm walking, if this is something that they consider to be smart from the start, 
the ones that aren't what they would consider smart from the start, I can only imagine the amount of damage that they're going to cause to the to the wildlife, uh, to the land. Uh, to, it, you know, it's just, it, it, it boggles me. And I'm kind of feeling, you know, like after yesterday, more on a personal level. I, again, I'm not a biologist. I'm not an electrical engineer. I'm just a person who likes wilderness. I, but I am a Nevada, and I live in Nevada now. Uh, I own a home here. I, I work here. I'm employed here, and I plan to stay. And, um, you know... It, couple things. One, it really stresses to me how important the work that Nevada Wilderness Project is doing is. You know, some of these areas, if they were protected years ago as wilderness, these power companies, these energy projects would have to figure out a different plan of action than crisscrossing these areas that I consider to be unique. Um, and then the other thing, too, was that yesterday I kind of felt like, you know, complicit or that I was a thief in the sense that, you know, I'm traveling through those canyons and I know what's going to happen because I have the ability to get on the internet and to read and to become engaged and involved. But uh, the land and the creatures that live back up in those canyons, they don't know what's coming. But they're going to know this this summer, and they're going to have to deal with it every day once it once it comes through there. And uh, it just leaves me feeling like kind of like oh, man. I mean, I'm glad I know, and I'm I'm happy I'm doing this walk, and it's teaching me a lot. Um, I'll come away with some experiences that I would have never had thought of that you know until I've actually come out here, and it makes me know how important my walking is for telling this story because I know just like when I long distance hike from like Mexico to Canada on the Pacific Crest Trail, it's very important for me to walk continuous unbroken footsteps the entire distance. And the reason for that is, is because then when I'm home and the trip's over in my mind's eye, I can think back in a linear fashion, in a contiguous fashion, all the way to Mexico, all the distance that I covered. And to me, that's a beautiful thing. It's how I express myself and it's part of who I am. To me, it's my form of art. It's my working on a canvas that's 2,700 miles long and two feet wide, you know? But uh, same thing with this trip. You know, if I'm fortunate enough and if I stay healthy and all goes well uh, and I make it to outside Las Vegas, you know, at the terminus of the SWIP, I'm going to be able to think back all of this land in a contiguous fashion and how it's going to be impacted by this, this uh, power line. And uh, I, I would have never had thought of that, you know, when I read about that on paper. I'm, I'm the one person that's kind of got the weight of that on their shoulders. And I felt it was really important yesterday to take as much photo and video because when you look at it on a map, it's kind of like, oh yeah, look at jogs over the mountains, just 10 miles. But then when you're actually out there on foot traveling through it, it's completely different. You know, it's never what you would expect. So I can say that that part I'm not entirely comfortable with. But uh, I'm still enjoying my walk and it's um, becoming all the more apparent to me how important it is. And... Um, I look forward to seeing the rest of the Egan range and, you know, what I have coming ahead, so... Yeah, I can swip.